I'd like you to take a look around the room and notice the women. Many of the women here today will have been pregnant at some point in their lives. Some of you might be actively trying to get pregnant, and others will be actively trying to prevent pregnancy. Our fertility is a fickle thing, complicated by its strange place in society, where people you hardly know feel compelled to rub your pregnant belly and ask when you're due, and at the same time so very private, when the story of your mother's stillbirth is not known or discussed until you have a miscarriage, where your best friend's unplanned pregnancy and abortion is not talked about until you reveal your distress at being pregnant just months after giving birth, or your struggle to become pregnant means excuses to work colleagues for days off for fertility treatment. You could be forgiven for thinking in this day and age of modern medicine that female fertility is 100% controllable, that we can switch it off and on at will, that when an Australian woman becomes sexually active at about 17, she will have no reason to be pregnant unless she plans to be that if and when she is ready to become a mother, she will get pregnant naturally, and that when her family is complete, she will slip towards menopause uneventfully. Here's the truth. Half of pregnancies in Australia are unintended. Half. Unintended pregnancies range from the stable couple who might like to start a family, but not just yet, through to the woman who's been sexually assaulted. Not all unintended pregnancies are unwanted. About half of women with an unplanned pregnancy will continue with that pregnancy. Almost all the other half will choose a termination, and a small number end in miscarriage. This is just one of the many misconceptions that we deal with in our work at Children by Choice. Australia's only independent, pro-choice, specialist unplanned pregnancy service. There's some thinking that our fertility is controllable and that it can be, and you can see this conversation witnessed in any online forum today. These comments were taken from a single social media feed about access to legal and safe abortion. And this is just a few of them. The attitude and idea that pregnancy can be controlled means that we can give women labels like lazy, promiscuous, and stupid. And we can deny them access to safe and legal abortion services because you shouldn't need them in the first place. You made your bed, Missy. Now lie in it. But is it really this simple? because as we know, every Australian woman has a perfect life, right? She's had excellent quality sex education, probably a mix from her school, her family, some discussions with her peers, a bit of Dr. Google, and some online pornography. There's no way that she's absorbed any of the many myths that we hear about in our work every day, like the persistent you can't get pregnant the first time you have sex. Or the young man who recently assured one of our counsellors that a woman can only get pregnant when she has an orgasm. <laughs> <laughs> or infamously, the American politician who stated that legitimate rape rarely ends in pregnancy. Next, our perfect Australian woman will have access not only to fantastic sex education, but she'll get some great advice about the right contraception for her. Not all contraceptive methods suit everyone, and all of them have some impact or side effects that vary in severity from woman to woman. But our perfect Australian woman has a GP who has excellent knowledge. They are up to date on the latest research and thinking about reproductive care. And finally, her choice is affordable, and it can be arranged today in a service that she feels completely comfortable using, knowing it is confidential and respectful. There's no hundreds of dollars in upfront costs. 
No booking an appointment in another service that she hasn't used before. No dread of an examination by a doctor she doesn't know. And no travel to a main centre to a special clinic. Perfect, fantastic, contraception sorted, fertility controlled. But is this the reality of our lives? Or is it something different? It is estimated that somewhere between one in six women will experience sexual assault, and one in three will experience domestic violence in Australia. At Children by Choice, about a third of our calls involve women who have experienced at least one form of violence. If you live with violence, your ability to control your own health care is often compromised. You may have a partner who controls the finances, or monitors your visits to doctors and other healthcare professionals. He may say he will use a condom or withdraw during sex, and then not. When our counsellors ask women if the sex was consensual, they say things like, it's easier than having another argument, or I didn't want to start another argument and for the kids to see him hurt me again. The reality is that the current discourse around and research around domestic violence has clearly identified pregnancy as a significant risk factor for violence to begin or escalate, particularly for young women, and that unintended pregnancy is often the result of an already abusive relationship. This might sound nightmarish, but it's frighteningly common. About one in four Australian young people report having had unwanted sex. This might be because of the impact of alcohol and drugs, but also because they felt pressured into it or were worried about the consequences of saying no. But let's say we fix it. We eliminate all forms of control and violence over women. We make sure that every single doctor and health service gives good quality advice about every type of contraception, and that it's free or affordable for everyone, and that women and men get great quality sex education on contraception and consent. And not only do we eliminate these barriers, but we eliminate them for every single one of the 520 menstrual cycles a woman will have in the 40 or so years of her reproductive life. And we eliminate it for every single Australian woman, regardless of her age, her location, her cultural or religious background, her location, and her socioeconomic status. That's a really big ask. It's a lot. But let's say we do it for all Australian women, 12 million or so of reproductive age. We reach utopia, and finally, we won't need abortion services anymore, right? Except no contraceptive method is 100% effective. Not one. Except abstinence. None of our current reversible contraceptive methods are guaranteed to work. Even if you use them every single time. Even if you don't have to worry about abuse even if you never, ever make a mistake or get carried away. Most women who are trying to avoid pregnancy are using at least one form of contraception. And more than half of women presenting to abortion services in Australia were using contraception at the time they became pregnant. Even our most reliable forms of contraception, the IUDs and implants, have a failure rate of about 1%. So in simple terms, that means for 100 women using them, over one year, almost one will become pregnant. Methods that rely more on the user, like the pill, the condom, the diaphragm, and the contraceptive ring, have even higher failure rates, even for perfect use. So, you are going to use the most effective form of contraception, 
and you're going to use it as perfectly as possible and you're going to do so for every single one of the 520 menstrual cycles of your life and you're only going to have sex when you freely consent to, there is a still a 1% chance that it won't work. Granted, you're possibly not going to be sexually active for every single one of the 520 menstrual cycles of your life, but I bet that you will be having sex often enough for it to potentially cause you a problem. And who has a problem? Women do. Many, many women. Somewhere between one in three and one in four Australian women will have an abortion in her lifetime. More women over 35 have abortions than women under 20. You are just as likely to have an abortion if you already have children than you are if you don't have any children. Women who identify as having a religion have abortions at about the same rate as women who have no religion. You will know someone who's had an abortion. Your mother, your sister, your girlfriend, your lawyer, your child's teacher, a colleague at work. Maybe her contraception failed. Maybe the man involved in the pregnancy was abusive. Maybe her family was complete. Maybe she felt like she was too young to start a family. Maybe she just didn't want children. Maybe she was struggling with an addiction or an illness that meant pregnancy was unsafe for her. Women choose abortions when they don't want to bring a child into this world or it is not safe for her to do so. I believe it is every woman's right to make this decision based on her own religious belief system and her ethical and moral code. No woman plans on having an abortion. It is not on her bucket list. But with 520 menstrual cycles to potentially navigate over your life, 520 possible chances of becoming pregnant, and somehow we're only supposed to do it when we plan to? That's a lot to ask. So why do we expect it of women? And this is the real kicker. We expect it of women, not people, not couples, women. If you think back to those comments that I put up earlier about the attitudes towards women with unplanned pregnancies, they weren't, why don't couples use contraception or not have sex? Or even why don't men use condoms or get vasectomies? Then why do women get pregnant? Like it's some strange internal combustion process that doesn't rely on any input from anyone else? Stop thinking pregnant thoughts, ladies. <laughs> I think we can do better. I think we can be better. We're not going to reach utopia anytime soon. But what we can do is start a conversation and shift the way we think about contraception and reproductive choice. If we are really going to see equality in our lifetimes, being in control of our own fertility has to be part of the solution. <laughs>